calculus is also very useful for working with um, straightforward sort of motion things and this actually has to do with physics now, you don't have to be a physics expert to understand this though but we have some neat uh, things we can do with what are called displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So first of all, displacement, I mean in, in physics at least we have a difference between displacement and distance and things like that, but I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about those. Also these are vectors, uh, but again we're going to be a little bit sloppy in the math form here. But there's no reason to be, I mean if you, if you like physics you can definitely be very careful, put the vector symbols on all these and away you go. But we're going to use the letter S for displacement. That's commonly used around the world, although a lot of other people write it with a D. And to be honest, I think D makes more sense, D displacement. But for some reason, a lot of the times they write S for displacement, so I'll write it like that. And that is measured in meters. Now what that really means is that is a distance traveled. Uh, it's not exactly, it's actually the distance you know, from your um, Actually, I shouldn't really say that, you know, I'm going to try not to be too sloppy because the physicist in me sort of cringes when I see that. So uh, distance from, you know, your start point, that's more accurate. The reason is this is just a quick little physics lesson here, but let's say I start walking here and I walk down south for one meter, then I go east for one meter and I go north for one meter. The question could be, so I've gone one meter, one meter, one meter. The question could be, what's my distance traveled? My distance traveled is 1 plus 1 plus 1, so that would be 3. But my displacement is not the same. My displacement is just, well, over here, how far am I from home? I'm one unit over. You know, I started here, I finished here, so I would say my displacement is only one unit, you know, to the east, I guess you could say. So displacement and distance don't have to be the same. In fact, they often aren't. Especially if I came back home, so to speak. So if I went, you know, one down, one right, one up, one left, then I could say my distance traveled is four meters, let's say, but my displacement could be zero because I've actually started and stopped at the same place. But that's just a little aside here. So we'll just say displacement is something to do with a distance. So that's why it's measured in units of meters. Now we have something else called V. Some people call it speed, but here we're going to call it velocity. And again, velocity and speed are pretty much the same thing, except one is a vector and one's a scalar. Um, but you don't have to worry too much about that here, not at least in this case. So for velocity, that's measured in meters per second. Or if you're an American, it's probably miles per hour or you know feet per second. I don't know, whatever you want. But in this case, meters per second. Now, sometimes people write it like this, meters per second. Uh, but the same thing as saying to negative one, because a negative exponent means it's on the bottom, so it's like meters per second. This is just a compact way of writing it. It also reminds you to get used to negative exponents. And then uh, we have acceleration, so that's A. A is acceleration. These are the three sort of things that you might be doing, and this is actually in meters per second squared. So meters per second squared. Now. These are actually related to each other, all three of these. This is the thing I want to show you. So we have velocity. Now velocity is actually related to displacement. If you look at the units here, um, what we could do is we could have a graph of displacement and it turns out that if you did a graph of displacement versus time, so if you had displacement versus time here, if that was displacement, this was time, and we did some sort of, I don't know, some weird sort of shape like this. Well, it turns out the velocity would be the slope of this, in other words, the derivative of this. And if you look at the units, S has units of meters, and time has units of seconds. So this would be, if we did the slope, it would have units of you know these divided by these. That's what would be meters per second, if we did the slope, and that's why it's meters per second. So it turns out that velocity then, we could write it as the derivative of displacement. In other words, the rate of change of displacement. So we can say this in calculus notation, ds dt. In other words, the velocity is the derivative of displacement. here. It's how the displacement changes with time. In other words, it's the slope or the gradient of a displacement time graph. Turns out acceleration is also related to this. It turns out if you take a v versus t graph, so this time if you graph velocity, which is in meters per second, 
maybe I'll write it like this. So velocity in meters per second. And this is time written in seconds. Well, it turns out if you take the slope of that graph, I don't know, maybe it's some straight line like this. If you take the slope of this, it would be meters per second divided by seconds, right? Because you'd have rise over run. So these things over these things. So it'd be meters per second divided by seconds. That's why I would have units of meters per second squared. So that means we can say that the acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity. In other words, dv dt. Remember what this means here. Over here, velocity is ds dt. What that means is take your equation for displacement and take the time derivative of it. This one says take your equation for velocity and take the time derivative of it. But if this one is the derivative of this one and this one is the derivative of that one, then we could also say that the acceleration is a second derivative of displacement. So we can also say that. We can say d squared s over dt squared. So we could say it's also the second derivative of displacement. So these are the key things to understand here. Now, of course, in a physics class, you'd learn all about how these are related and do a million, zillion different examples with accelerated motion and all sorts of fun stuff. But what I want to show you is a trick. This is a trick I use in physics, but I may as well show it to you for math. I think it comes in really handy. So this is a little trick for you. And I maybe I'll do this in red. So here's a little trick. So I'm going to show you this. This is just a nice way to remember what to do with different graphs. So I'm going to draw three different graphs, three different axes here. I'm going to try to make them roughly line up. It doesn't have to be exact. This is always going to be time. Now here what we're going to do, we're going to graph displacement. Here we're going to graph velocity. And here we're going to graph acceleration, all versus time. So displacement versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. So I want to show you this. Now, this could actually be a real example. And although I won't really necessarily be able to explain all the details of it, because it's not a physics uh, sort of little video I'm making here. It's a math one. But still, if we took, uh, can you imagine I have... Now, my last name is Campbell, so I like to do this with like a little board here. I would have like a wooden board in class, and I would bring a little can of Campbell's soup. So I would take this little can, and I would roll it up the hill, and then, you know, it would obviously come down. So I'd give it a push up the hill, it would go up the hill, it would slow down, it would stop, and it would come back down. And what I would do is have a little device here, like a little sonic ranger that I would hook up to a little uh, computer. And what this thing does is it sends out a little pulse of sound, basically. It's really, that's how bats travel and navigate, actually. Not travel, that's how they navigate. So basically what it does, it sends out a little pulse, and that means it knows the distance from this little device to the can of soup at any second. So if I actually sort of do this experiment here, maybe I'll, uh, I'll leave it here for now, but this isn't very useful. I'll erase this little picture in a second. Well, what happened then is if I start off my little machine, my distance from home at time t equals zero is zero. So I start off at home, so to speak. At some point in time, of course, it goes up and it reaches a maximum distance away from home. So that's maybe, I don't know, maybe it's this value here. And then at some point in time, it actually comes back home. So at some time, it's back to zero. It turns out if you do this, this is really cool. If you actually do this experiment for real in a classroom, it makes a perfect parabola. Even though I didn't draw it perfect, it makes a really, really nice looking parabola. It's kind of fun to see that, you know, you might think parabolas aren't important, but just the motion of this thing, that gives a perfect parabola. And now you might think, okay, well, what would the velocity look like? So you can actually then use a computer to actually graph then. This is going to be zero velocity. I'm going to make this positive. This is going to be some negative value. Same thing here. I'm going to draw some zero acceleration. So this is some negative value. I don't care too much about the values. But what we can do then is we can take a look at this graph. And what's really cool is if you look at this graph carefully, you can actually figure out what shape this one right here should have. And that's because you know that velocity is the derivative of displacement. In other words, take your equation for displacement and take the time derivative. Well, in this case, the meaning of derivative, when we look at a graph, the meaning of it is that's the slope of the tangent. So let's take a look right here. If I pick myself a random point right here, the slope of the tangent, well, the tangent line would be some sort of straight line going like this. It would be a positive number. 
So I'm going to start it off then at some large positive number, maybe here, doesn't matter what value that is. Now at this time right here, this is key here, over here, what's the slope of the tangent? Well, the tangent line would be flat, it would be horizontal. And the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So that means lining up with this time is going to be a value of zero for the velocity. And of course, over here, this right here, the slope of the tangent here is some negative, large, negative value. So that'll be some negative, uh, negative value that's large. It turns out, look over here, it gets less steep. So that means the value gets less and less and less until it's zero. It actually makes, if you do this experiment, whoops, I didn't really draw it very well. If you do this experiment really carefully in a lab, it turns out you get an almost perfect straight line. And then, since I said that the acceleration was the derivative of velocity, that means then if I take my graph of velocity versus time and I look at what's the slope of this at every point, we can do that too. Take a look here. The, let's say I pick this point right here. The slope of the tangent is some negative value, some negative slope. Over here, it's the same negative value, you know, because that's what the tangent line is doing. Over here, it's the same negative value. So you notice here, it's not changing in steepness. This is supposed to be a straight line. If it's a straight line, that means it has a constant slope, right? A constant negative slope. That means here, it will be some constant negative value. So you'd have a graph then like this. This really helps if you're physics students, at least this really, really helps. But if you're a math student, this also comes in handy. And the reason is that what I like to do is I like to remember then this, that if you have your graphs lined up like S versus T, so displacement versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time, I like to use this little trick here. I remember this. If I'm going down, now what I mean by going down is this, that if I'm given a graph of displacement versus time, and I'm asked, what is the velocity versus time, then this is what I mean by going down. You know, I start with one of these graphs, and I want something you know, lower, I want the velocity. Or, if I start with a velocity time graph, and I'm asked for the acceleration, that's also going down. So if I start with this, I also can go down this way. To go down, you take the derivative. So down is derivative. In other words, you take the slope, or some people call that the gradient. So basically take the slope. And conversely, if you're asked to go up, so if you're going up, that means let's say you're starting with an acceleration time graph. So maybe you're given an equation or even you're given a graph. And you're asked, what's the velocity at blah, blah, blah time? You go, oh God, how do I do that? Well, going up is the opposite of doing a derivative. Remember, we learned that what's opposite to a derivative? Well, something called an antiderivative, which is related to an integral. So if you go up, you take the integral. In other words, the area under the curve. So this is a really, I think this is a really important trick. I love using this, and this is actually what I always do. Whenever I see, no matter how crazy the question looks, um, if I find things looking really confusing, if I'm you know, faced with a really complicated question with you know, displacement or time or acceleration, I use this trick here. This is actually how I have it in my own brain. This is how I remember it. So I think that's important for you too. So that means, let's say you're starting with a velocity time graph and you're asked, what's the displacement? And you think, hmm, I'm going up. Up means take the area under the curve. So take the integral. But what if you're given the same graph and you're asked, what's the acceleration? Oh, I know I go down, so I take the derivative. It's a nice, easy way, I think at least, to, to remember um, what to do if you take the derivative or the integral. So in the next video, I'm going to show you an example of working with exactly this. But instead of working with the graphs, we're going to work with just the equations. It could have easily been the graph, though, too.